So what that's going to look like most of the time is something like a Venmo or Zelle was sent over um, and they didn't pay the invoice, say, through the QuickBooks method or, you know, QuickBooks sends, you know, I think um, an email that says, here, pay your invoice by clicking on this. Say your client doesn't have that set up and they're just sending PDFs and they're like, just zen Zelle me the money, Venmo me the money. You guys would be surprised how many businesses, how many million dollar businesses are doing that. So we just want to use the bank fee. All right, so I'm just going to quickly create a scenario for us where this is going to happen um, with QuickBooks. All right, so I created a scenario for us because with the sample company, this isn't a real live bank feed, right? So I kind of had to create something. So say we had already previously, maybe a couple weeks ago or something, already had created an invoice for one of our clients, but they, they're gonna pay via Zelle, via whatever. And it, it finally shows up on our bank feed as received. Um, if it's in there, uh, then we're going to see this little notification that says one match found. Or sometimes it's multiple matches found if you have multiple similar invoices that might match this dollar amount. Or, and um, But they might be off by a date, so you guys need to make sure that you guys are reading over and reviewing this section here. Because if you have multiple invoices, it's going to ask you which invoice you want to use towards this. So um, it tells you here suggested matches. Also, $200 falls between uh, these dates, and you're, it's just giving you a heads up. So the invoice that it's going to match we match you with is this invoice here. If it's not the right match, you can look for other matches. Uh, when you create this match, it's going to automatically create a payment. And it's going to close this invoice. So watch how this works. It's going to do all the work for you in the background that we just did. All right. So see how this one says two matches found? How I'd explain. You got to make sure you choose the right one. If you don't know, we must ask. So now that we have that in there, you're thinking, oh, well, where's the, what's the payment look like? How do I know? So if we were to look that up, um, you guys can easily look that up by just going over to the one you just did, Amy. Um, let me see. What's the fastest way? Uh, we can go to categorized. Let's see if I can bring this up. Oh, it won't let me click on anything. Okay. Well, let's just go to our sales. Oh, sorry. And we know that that was for Amy. So let's just go to customers. There's a faster way to do this. I just want to kind of take you guys this way to show you the route that I would go to, especially if you're doing bookkeeping cleanup, because this is when it really matters. All right. And let me close this up a little bit. No, I don't want that. Okay, so this is the one that we just closed. And see, it's a payment. So this is the payment that was made. See, closed, payment. Payment invoice, payment invoice. So it already, when we matched it, it automatically created a payment. So if you guys wanted to view that, this is what it looked like. And you know that it was matched because it says so right here, one online bank matching. If you click on this link, it tells you. Manually added means that we've manually clicked match or add. Okay, that's what that means when it says mode manually added. You guys can always unmatch it if it's not correct. So this is what the payment looks like. It's just like we did receive payment on our last exercise, except that when we did it this time, we did it through the bank feed. So it makes that step a lot easier and makes this non-existent to us because it's being done in the background. So it makes our job a lot quicker. I hope that makes sense. All right. So in the case where we're doing Venmos and Zells, if that was to happen, I would say that we need to also just confirm that with our clients, making sure that that's what they're paying for 
or if our clients, for instance, um, sorry, I'm scrolling all over the place. If our clients don't use invoices, for instance, then we would just need to make sure that we are asking our clients, hey, what's the sell one if we don't have that information. So if your client doesn't make you an admin on their bank, um, you know, their online banking or because you're new or this is a very new you know, relationship, that's OK. Just let your client know that these are going to be weekly conversations that we would need to have to make sure that I have the right. Uh, breakdown and maybe they're using a different software or different app to help them navigate um, their Zells and you know their Venmo payments especially for those clients that have um, like hairstylist services or just you know maybe they're a massage therapist uh, maybe they just provide services like um, consulting fees then we just need to make sure that as these Zells are coming in, especially like I said with hairstylists, they're just getting Zell money that they aren't you know, attached to any invoices. Um, we're making sure that they are properly categorized to the correct sale, meaning if it's, you know, if your client's like, I want you to be very general and anything that comes through, you know, if I'm a hairstylist, it's just going to be sales because or services because I only do hair. I'm not breaking it out into perms or color or trims or haircuts or anything like that. If they do want to see that kind of breakdown, that is something that you can provide. It just takes a lot more conversation with people like hairstylists. And sometimes, like I've noticed in the past, they just don't have the time. So that organization is completely up to you and however you guys want to do that.